Welcome back, everyone. In this lecture, we're going to have a brief overview and discussion of Plotly, Dash, and data visualization for Python. So our main goals for this lecture is just to get some context and understanding of what visualization libraries already exist for Python, and then to understand what Plotly is and when to use it, and also understand what Dash is, how it's different than Plotly, and when to use Dash by itself. So let's get started by answering the question, what libraries already exist to visualize data with Python? Now there's actually a ton of visualization libraries and we're not gonna go through all of them here. We're just gonna go through some main ones that have some characteristics similar to Plotly. And the very first library that we should discuss is matplotlib. This is kind of the grandfather of all the data visualization libraries for Python. And it was modeled after MATLAB, another programming language. MATLAB's own plotting capabilities the creator of matplotlib wanted those plotting capabilities for Python. So a lot of its syntax and characteristics stem from the language of MATLAB. And what matplotlib is good for is to create static image files. That is something like a JPEG or .png file, something that doesn't really change once it's already been created. And what's nice about matplotlib is even though it has a bit of a complex syntax to learn, it allows you to create almost any plot type, it gives you a ton of flexibility, and that comes a little bit at the cost of having to learn this kind of tricky syntax because it stems from MATLAB. But again, matplotlib, that's gonna be for static image files. And then another really common visualization library to learn with Python is called Seaborn. And Seaborn actually uses matplotlib on the back end. And what it does, it's really designed to create nice looking statistical plots. And again, these are static plots. These aren't interactive plots. However, Seaborn, it has some cleaner syntax and you can do really nice plots in just a single line of code, but you can only create the statistical plots that are available in the documentation. If you wanna go to different plot types that Seaborn doesn't support, you'll have to go back and start using matplotlib again because Seaborn is basically built on top of matplotlib as kind of almost like a nice API for some statistical visualizations. Then we can move on to pandas. Now the main purpose of pandas is actually data analysis, but just like many other libraries in Python, as we see a common theme here, pandas uses matplotlib on the backend through a simple dot plot call that you can call off a of pandas data frame. And there's a limited scope of the plot types you can do here, but again, it, they're static plots and you can do them with one single line of code with pandas. But all the plots we've seen so far are static. That is, once you generate the image file, you can't interact with it in any way. It's basically like creating a JPEG or a PNG file. Now let's shift our discussion to answering the question, what is Plotly? And Plotly, that term can cause confusion sometimes because Plotly is both a company and an open source library. So let's differentiate those two for a second. Plotly, the company, is a company that focuses on data visualization for business intelligence. And they do things such as reporting, dashboards, and hosting business intelligence visualization solutions. So that's the company. But that company released an open source library by the same name. It's also called Plotly. And Plotly, the open source library, is a general data visualization library focused on interactive visualizations. And Plotly is actually not just unique to Python. It has libraries for JavaScript, React, R, and Python. It just so happens to be that the most popular version of this Plotly library is for Python. So how is Plotly, the open source library, different than things like matplotlib or Seaborn? And the way it's different is because using the Plotly Python library by itself creates interactive plots as HTML files. So these aren't exactly static plots. You can actually do things like zoom in, select, and hover. So keep in mind that while users can still interact with these new Plotly plots that are HTML files, these plots themselves can't really be connected to changing data sources, which is where we need something like Dash. So when Plotly, once the interactive Plotly plot is generated, that data that the plot represents is essentially going to be locked in to the exported state of the plot. And you would need to somehow rerun the .py script in order to regenerate that .html file to see any updates. And constantly having to rerun .py scripts, that's not really what we want when we're thinking about dashboards. So Plotly by itself is really great when you just want some nice little interactive image that you know the data source behind it uh, is gonna be static and not changing. So let's discuss the other option when we actually want something like a dashboard that we'll be able to update and manipulate and interact with. So Often, like I was just mentioning, users want plots to be able to interact with each other, interact with components, or have the plots update in real time. And to accomplish this level of tasks, we need some sort of a dashboard, which is a step beyond what normal Plotly can provide for us. 
So Dash is an open source library from the Plotly company that allows you to create a full dashboard with multiple components, interactivity, and multiple plots. And that's really uh, the main focus of this course. We're gonna start off by learning about Plotly and then shift into really diving deep in Dash. So instead of creating an HTML file like Plotly, the open source library would have done, Dash will produce a dashboard web application that ends up being open at a local URL. And then you can visit and interact with that dashboard in the web application. So instead of just a simple HTML file being exported, we actually get a full blown web app as our dashboard when we're using the Dash library. Now, since Dash renders a full web app, you can then actually deploy your dashboards online for other people to use. So in conclusion, Python has many visualization libraries, including many static visualization libraries, and there's a lot more libraries that we didn't have time to mention for this particular lecture. But when you want to go beyond the static visualization, you then have that Plotly open source library, which can create interactive images. And when you want to go a step further and have the actual data source be changing or have interactive components, things like sliders or picking dates, then you can use Dash. And Dash is going to create a dashboard web application that you'll actually be able to see in your browser or deploy online for others to use. Now, it's a big jump just to go straight into Dash. So what we're going to first do is get really comfortable with Plotly, that open source library. We're going to learn how to create lots of different plot types with it. And then once we feel really comfortable with Plotly, we'll go ahead and do a deeper dive into Dash and creating dashboards. All right, I'm really excited to get started with the technical concepts. So we'll see you at the next lecture.